Um, I hope you can all uh, see my screen. Uh, welcome to uh, the webinar uh, uh, about Oscar and Puppet, uh, auto provisioning Puppet with uh, with VirtualBox. Uh, today we'll talk about a, a little tool called Oscar, uh, which is uh, created by Puppet Labs to uh, make uh, uh, provisioning local Puppet Enterprise uh, uh, environments uh, uh, a lot easier. Um, a little bit about me. My name is Walter Heck. I'm a software engineer turned DBA, turned sysadmin, turned entrepreneur, uh, CTO of uh, Olin Data now. Um, very wide range of, uh, of technical uh, background. Um, Olin Data is, uh, I think, a partner for Holland, India, and Southeast Asia. Uh, we're a Puppet Labs partner, or a Puppet partner uh, these days, a Linux Foundation partner, and uh, we do MySQL consulting. Um, no need to spend too much time on this. Um, an overview of what we will be discussing today. Uh, we will discuss uh, first a little bit about Puppet. I would hope that everybody who is uh, attending uh, or watching this uh, already knows what Puppet is, um, but uh, just in case you don't. Um, we'll, uh, we'll talk about a little uh, typical Puppet architecture. Uh, then we'll, uh, we'll look at uh, what OSCAR actually is and why we would want to use it some prerequisites, uh, a little getting started, um, and then uh, um, a path to more exploration of things you can do with, uh, with Oscar. It's actually quite flexible, um, so uh, it's quite interesting. I'll, uh, I'll show a demo as we go along as well uh, of certain parts. Uh, the actual uh, uh, setup of the master I've already done beforehand because it, uh, it takes a bit of uh, power to um, uh, or a bit of time to, to set up a, a master, but uh, you'll show you'll see uh, a number of, uh, of things. Um, what is Puppet and why do we care? Uh, Puppet is configuration management software. It's been around since uh, a little over a decade now. Uh, scales very well. I, I've done uh, Puppet environments on as little as three nodes and as as large as uh, fifteen thousand uh, servers, um, but. Uh, the largest environments uh, span well over 200,000 servers. Uh, so that makes it very suitable for many different environments. It's multi-platform, uh, especially in uh, larger enterprises where uh, the number of, uh, there's a, usually a plethora of platforms. Uh, it's very useful to have a tool that, uh, that can run on all of them. Um, it's commercially supported open source, so there's an enterprise version and an open source version. Today we'll talk uh, a bit more about the enterprise version. Um, but the open source version has uh, largely the same uh, bits of functionality. It's just a bit more uh, complicated to, uh, to set up. Uh, Puppet creates what is called infrastructure as code, which uh, means that in uh, what I call the Puppet Nirvana, uh, if you have all your uh, infrastructure defined using Puppet and configured using Puppet, then you'll have all of your infrastructure uh, written, written down in code. And that makes uh, for a lot of uh, advantages uh, of things that you can do that you couldn't do uh, if you didn't have uh, such code. A typical puppet architecture uh, usually has a puppet master, and uh, that's usually one server or a number of servers, depending on the size of your uh, 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 data center or your, uh, your environment. Um, the Puppet Master takes, uh, as we see here at the top right, a, uh, a code repository. That, that's usually the part that you write uh, by yourself. Um, so you write code. It's normal to put it in a Git repository. And that code uh, goes on to the Puppet Master um, using one of, uh, one of many, uh, many different uh, techniques to deploy code onto a server, which is fairly standard uh, stuff. Um, then the uh, um, uh, uh, each server in the data in in your puppet environment uh, runs a little tool called the puppet agent. Uh, it's a very small uh, uh, daemon uh, that runs by default every half an hour and uh, connects to the puppet master and asks the puppet master, "Hey, can I have my configuration?" Uh, and applies that configuration to the local uh, node. Now. If you have such a, a, a setup and you want to do certain things, then um, especially outside of your production environment, which is what we're talking about today, uh, there are some uh, uh, some 
moments where you will want to test things quickly uh, locally without uh, uh, messing with uh, setting up uh, uh, VMs on a VMware uh, instance and, and all that, uh, all these kind of things. Um, if you're uh, developing new modules that are independent of your uh, actual real environment, uh, then it can be nice to have a clean vanilla Puppet Enterprise environment so that you can get to working on the module quickly instead of uh, um, having to uh, uh, make sure that the module doesn't accidentally work because of your environment. Uh, if you want to set up new development environments, uh, it can also be very useful to be able to quickly deploy a new enter Puppet Enterprise uh, uh, setup uh, cleanly, uh, deploy your code on top of it, and be ready to uh, ready to go. Uh, automated tests uh, can, uh, can be made much more easily when you have uh, easy to deploy uh, uh, Puppet enterprise, uh, enterprise environment, uh, reproducing issues. Uh, that last item is actually uh, uh, why Puppet Labs uh, created uh, uh, Oscar. It's uh, used by the support department uh, of Puppet itself to uh, reproduce is issues that um, uh, customers are having. Um, in short, just setting up a new master and uh, and uh, one or more agents uh, is uh, quite a bit of a task. So. Uh, uh, with the automation, this can be uh, can be made quite a bit easier. For that, uh, there's Oscar Stack. Uh, it's referred to as Oscar, but it's basically a set of uh, uh, of Vagrant uh, uh, plugins. Um, I wrote here VirtualBox plugins, but they're of course uh, Vagrant plugins. Um, it's quite extend, uh, extendable, so you can easily add things on, on top of it. I'll show you at the end uh, uh, some of the stuff that we have done uh, with it. Um, so it's not necessarily only for Puppet Enterprise. You can use uh, open source Puppet if you uh, uh, hack around a little bit. And uh, it, it, it allows you to create uh, some more complex uh, Puppet deployments uh, quite fast. Um, there's an, a number of uh, prerequisites. Uh, you have to make sure that you have uh, uh, a VirtualBox installed on your host machine. Uh, Vagrant, uh, you can find it on vagrantup.com. Vagrant um, a, a Vagrant plugin called Oscar. Uh, so when you have Vagrant installed already, uh, you can download it from the Vagrant Up uh, website. And when you have it installed, you can just say Vagrant plugin uh, install Oscar, as you see here. At the bottom of the oh, at the bottom of the screen. Um, so, VirtualBox and, and Vagrant. Uh, in case you're not familiar with them, VirtualBox is uh, uh, a mostly oriented towards desktops uh, a tool for uh, a, a local virtualization. So it is used to set up uh, virtual machines locally on your uh, on your host machine. Um, very similar to VMware Player and VMware Fusion. Uh, it's great for local VMs. Uh, for instance, the Puppet training, the official Puppet training, uses uh, uh, either VirtualBox or VMware Player to set up a local uh, server on each person's laptop so they can have a, um, how do you say that, uh, a virtual machine uh, to use for uh, developing during the training. Um, the only downside is that uh, because all of the VMs are running on your local uh, system, uh, you need uh, significant resources um, as much as your uh, host operating system uses, plus uh, however many uh, resources the, uh, the guests uh, use. Um, but this is quite normal. It's just that uh, normally virtualization is run on a server and not necessarily on a on a desktop. So if you want to make larger environments with three, four, five, six uh, virtual machines, then it becomes a bit more tricky to do it uh, locally on a on a desktop. Um, Vagrant, on the other hand, is a wrapper around VirtualBox written written in Ruby um, by uh, uh, originally by uh, Mitchell Hashimoto of uh, HashiCorp uh, fame. Um, it's make it makes it a little bit easier to uh, easily provision new machines uh, that are also item potent. So Vagrant works with a, a so-called Vagrant file, and given the same Vagrant file, you will always uh, be left with the same uh, server with the same IP address, host name, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, all automatically with simple uh, commands. 
Um, it's a flat file uh, configuration uh, uh, tool, so it's great to check it in uh, into version control together with your application code. So you can uh, can have a vagrant box that, uh, uh, sorry, a vagrant file that brings up a server and uh, uh, installs a development version of a of a software tool that you're writing, for instance. Um, check it out, vagrantup.com. I won't spend too much time here on uh, explaining vagrant itself. Um, Vagrant works with uh, what it calls boxes. Uh, so these boxes are uh, basically virtual box, virtual machines packaged with a little bit of extra information uh, so as to be easily used in a Vagrant environment. And uh, if you have Vagrant installed, you can just say Vagrant box list and see a list of installed uh, boxes. Uh, let me show you. Uh, so vagrant, oh, vagrant box list shows you a whole list of all the boxes um, that are installed. In this case, there's a number of them uh, with different versions. Um, the ones with this syntax. Uh, uh, Puppet Labs, and then a slash, and then the name of the box. Uh, they come from a, uh, um, a sort of a vagrant box repository called Atlas, uh, maintained by HashiCorp. Uh, and uh, Puppet Labs publishes uh, machines there. So if you look at, um, let me show you, atlas.hashicorp.com slash Puppet Labs, you will see there vagrant boxes created by Puppet. Um, that are easy. The ones with no CM uh, are no configuration management software, so they are very bare bones boxes, uh, as simple as possible. And the ones with Puppet have uh, either a Puppet Enterprise agent or an older Puppet Enterprise agent. Uh, you'll see it in the description of the of the box. Um, so that's the list of boxes. Uh, let me go back. So these boxes are used uh, in order to bring up the VirtualBox VMs uh, as, a, as a base box to bring up the VirtualBox VMs. Um, then uh, what, the other thing we need is a Puppet Enterprise installer, uh, which you can just download from uh, puppet.com slash download Puppet Enterprise. You'll have to fill in a form, then you'll be forwarded to a, uh, to a place where you can uh, uh, download uh, the, um, the direct, uh, where you can retrieve the link to the uh, setup file, and then uh, all you need to do is say vagrant PE build, uh, copy, and then the URL of the box that you want to copy in there, uh, and uh, it'll copy that uh, that or it'll it'll download that file into a spe special directory. In my case, uh, users walterheck.vagrant.d slash PE builds, um, so that it becomes uh, easy for uh, for Oscar to. Uh, to see the boxes that are available, or the, the enterprise installer uh, that are available. Um, so PE build is one of the uh, uh, Vagrant plugins that come with uh, Oscar. So if you if you look here, um, I can do Vagrant plugin list, and you'll see Vagrant Oscar. Um, but if I do Vagrant help, you can see that we have a few special, special commands. We have the PE build uh, uh, command here. Um, we have the Oscar command here um, and the hosts uh, command. These are all Vagrant plugins that are installed by the Oscar uh, plugin. Um, so if I do Vagrant PE build list, I can see the uh, Puppet Enterprise installers that we have uh, currently available. And as you can see, I've been using uh, Oscar for a while, so I have a number of different enterprise installers uh, sitting there uh, that can all be used uh, by Oscar uh, simply by changing the, the version of the um, uh, of Puppet Enterprise that I want to use, it'll take the right uh, file. 
Um, so after I've uh, downloaded the boxes that I want to use and the uh, enterprise uh, uh, installers that I want to use, it's time to uh, initialize a, uh, an OSCAR environment. Um, Normally, when you want to initialize a Vagrant environment, you say, you say Vagrant init, um, but with uh, Oscar, you say Vagrant Oscar init. Um, I've already done that here uh, in this environment, and what, it, uh, what happens when you do that is it creates a, um, a Vagrant file, as you see here. Um, this Vagrant file doesn't look like a normal Vagrant file, and that's because uh, Oscar uses YAML files to define what you want it to create. Um, this one can close. Um, so the Vagrant file basically just runs the, uh, or uh, um, yeah, run does an Oscar run of the, uh, the config directory, which contains the YAML files that we need. The config directory contains, uh, in this case, four YAML files. One is boxes.yaml, which is currently not being used. Um, one is pebuild.yaml, which contains only the version of PE that you want to use. So if you look here and you see Puppet Enterprise 2016.1.2 uh, EL7 x86-64, x um, if I change this to 2016, One dot two. Uh, now, if I uh, bring up the the boxes uh, from scratch, it'll automatically use the 2016.1.2 uh, installer. Uh, in this example, I will use 2015.2.2 uh, though, um, simply because uh, as as you see here, I have the uh, installers for different platforms, so I can show you a bit more. Um, then there are two more files, and these are the most important ones. Uh, they are roles.yaml and vms.yaml. And as you see, in roles.yaml, we can uh, we sp uh, specify specific roles, uh, and each role has uh, a number of configuration options. You can find it on the uh, on the GitHub page, all the options that are there. Um, but by default, it will create a role called PE Puppet Master and PE Puppet Agent uh, with all of these uh, um, uh, options. I didn't really change anything here. And on the other side, uh, we have a number of uh, VMs, and the VMs.yaml will be created um, by the second command uh, here. Uh, so v Vagrant Oscar init creates the basic uh, stuff, and then Vagrant Oscar, oh, sorry, Vagrant Oscar init VMs uh, is a command that we use to uh, uh, to create a specific environment. So we say Vagrant Oscar init VMs. Uh, we specify the PE version. Uh, the, then we say uh, dash dash master, uh, which means uh, add a master to this environment. Uh, the name of what we want that master to be called. So in this case, I just chose master equals, and then the name of the box that we want to use. So we're using CentOS 7.0 with no configuration management. So this is a, a very bare bones box uh, that we're using. And then uh, we have three arguments, uh, dash dash agent, uh, one called first, one called second, one called third. Uh, one is a CentOS 6.6 machine, one is a Ubuntu 14.04 machine, and one is a CentOS 7 uh, uh, machine. Uh, and these, will, these three will be uh, set up as agents. Uh, if you uh, press enter then, you will, uh, it'll uh, uh, compile that into, a, uh, into the correct YAML files, and then it'll say your environment has been initialized with the following configuration, one master, Puppet Labs sent to a 764, uh, et cetera, uh, which is basically a summary of the arguments that we gave here. Going back to the vms.yaml, and as you can see here, it created my uh, four VMs, one called master, one called first, second, and third, and they have the different uh, boxes that I specified, CentOS 7, CentOS 6.6, Ubuntu 14.04, and CentOS 7. Uh, that's it. So all of this will be generated automatically. And then 
uh, after that, we are ready to uh, to just say Vagrant up. Um, so Vagrant comes with these commands. Uh, Vagrant status will show you the status of the, uh, of the boxes currently. In this case, master, first, uh, second, and third. And you can see in this case that uh, master is set to aborted, which means I brought it up uh, yesterday, but my uh, I shut down my laptop, so the master was aborted. Um, but I can just say vagrant up master, and that will bring up the master, which if I load my VirtualBox control panel, you'll see here that it's now just bringing up uh, the master. You can see in the background, it's actually trying to bring up the machine. So it brought up the machine, and now VirtualBox can log into it, or Vagrant can log into it, and it sets up some network interfaces. Some other stuff, and uh, I'll be left with a uh, master. Um, if it's the first time you bring up that master, which uh, in this case I did yesterday uh, because it, uh, it takes a while, it'll install the version of uh, Puppet Enterprise that you've specified in the, uh, um, uh, what was it, the PE build uh, file. So we specified 2015.2.2. Uh, and so when I brought that up the first time, it, it installed Puppet Enterprise 2015.2.2 uh, .2 and brought up a of an enterprise console uh, with the uh, credentials admin uh, and password puppet labs. So once this box is up, I can go and SSH into it. Uh, Vagrant also creates uh, uh, some, uh, some easy to use uh, shortcuts for this. So I can just say Vagrant SSH master and it'll SSH into the master as the Vagrant user. I say sudo su, yeah, and then system ctl t service. PuppetDB and Puppet Server are still activating. Console services is somehow dead. And that's probably because the box wasn't properly rebooted, but it was just uh, uh, shut down hard yesterday. So I'll just start console services. This will take a while. Um, Puppet Enterprise uh, uses uh, um, uh, Clojure, and that uses uh, JVM instead, uh, or in, uh, in turn. So it'll take a while for the uh, JVM to start and for the console services to, uh, to come up. The root password uh, is Puppet, uh, which is a standard uh, password uh, created by um, the uh, um, the vagrant boxes uh, created by Puppet Labs. So yeah, it's listening on four four three as you can see. So we should be able to log into it now. Uh, let's see what the IP address is: ten dot twenty dot one dot twenty four. Ten twenty one twenty four. Ah. By default, the firewall is running on those machines. So if I turn that off, I can do admin Puppet Labs. And 
apparently PuppetDB is not up yet. Uh, PuppetDB did not start correctly. So we'll start it manually. This is all the, the, the direct result of me uh, um, uh, improperly shutting down the machine yesterday. So when you uh, normally do a vagrant up, it'll uh, uh, it'll come up uh, nicely, uh, fully automated. But in this case, it uh, it requires a bit of uh, uh, hand holding. Start a second session into tailbar log. Let's see, it finished. Did it come up correctly? Yeah, it's correct now. There we go. Um, you could also see the first uh, node there because I brought that up yesterday as well uh, as part of my test. Um, but that's actually a rather fun uh, exercise. So I'm logging out of this uh, master here on the right hand side. And now what I can do, going back to uh, my slides. Um, so doing a vagrant up for the master brings up the master, installs the desired version of PE, and then uh, brings up the console and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the really interesting part is in the uh, uh, agents, where uh, when you say vagrant up, one of the agents, it'll bring up uh, uh, the, the virtual machine, install the PE, agent version for that operating system. It'll update ETC hosts, not only on that node, but also on all the other nodes, uh, so that uh, the DNS resolve uh, works locally uh, for all the nodes. It'll uh, create an agent certificate and sign it on the master. And uh, if it needs to uh, add a uh, package repository to the master in order for the agent to uh, be able to retrieve the correct package version, it'll do that as well. Um, so there's quite a few uh, interesting bits, uh, bits and pieces happening. Um, let's show that. Instead of uh, working with first, I'll bring up vagrant up second. So that brings up the second node. Um, and we'll show you what the various things are that are happening there. Um, just to show you that this is actually working right now, you don't see uh, the first or the second node uh, there, um, but in a moment, uh, you will see it there. So what this would do is considering our VMs.yaml, our uh, second node is supposed to run Ubuntu 14.04. It imports the, the base box that we have specified. So we've uh, specified the, uh, um, the standard Vagrant box, uh, Ubuntu 14.04 64-bit, uh, no configuration management. So it imports that box. That takes a few, uh, few seconds. Let me see while we wait if there's any questions in the meantime. If you have any questions, feel free to add them in the chat or in the uh, questions. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, so the, one of the questions uh, by Ajit Kumar is, uh, do we require a separate license to use Oscar or will it be covered under our existing Puppet Enterprise license? So Puppet Enterprise comes with 10 nodes uh, uh, free. Uh, so uh, especially for these kind of environments, uh, because they won't be long-lived environments and they won't go into a... Uh, um, uh, how to say that? They won't be going into a, a production environment. Uh, you don't need an extra license for them, as far as I know. Uh, so you stick to development, and it will it will be under the uh, the, the normal uh, um, free license uh, model. Uh, so as we see here. Um, it did a bunch of things. Uh, we it, it set up the, the network interfaces. Um, it inserted a public key so we can connect to it. Uh, and then here, more importantly, um, it ran the provisioner for hosts and it updated the hosts on the master. So now if I see here, you see that it added a hosts entry uh, for the second node to that machine. Um, then it tried to install the uh, PE agent uh, um, repository, uh, but it couldn't because the uh, um, the correct uh, class wasn't present on the master. And I thought this happened automatically in my previous testing that appeared to be the case with the um, with the CentOS uh, uh, machine, but it didn't. Um, So we will add this to the master, which is very simple. We go here. Sorry, to our classification. Uh, we go to the P master, and we add the class. Commit it. This will deploy when I run Puppet Agent now on the master. It'll deploy uh, a local uh, um, package repository for uh, Ubuntu uh, for, uh, for the Puppet Enterprise agent on Ubuntu 14.04. So you'll see that this master will now start doing a whole bunch of things. I can already log into the uh, second node uh, because it came up properly. It just didn't uh, uh, manage to uh, finish the provisioning process with the Puppet Enterprise agent, but it will, uh, we'll make that happen in a second. See here on the left, it is now creating uh, the package repository. That's done, and now, so Vagrant allows me to uh, now not have to destroy the machine and bring it up back back up again, but I can just say Vagrant provision second, and what it will do is it'll run all the uh, all the steps uh, that are defined here in the provisioners uh, 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 section of the role that is assigned to this node. So the node here in the vms.yaml has the role PE Puppet Agent. And here in the roles.yaml, we see that the role PE Puppet Agent in its provisioner step says uh, sync the hosts, uh, which is what updates the etc hosts uh, file. And it uh, says go and install Puppet Enterprise Agent and set its master to the master node. So. You'll see here at the top uh, that it ran the provisioner hosts, uh, where hosts, this word hosts uh, refers to this of the uh, this provisioner, and it'll also say after that running the provisioner PE agent, which corresponds to this provisioner. That does a bunch of stuff. 
which installs the Puppet Enterprise agent. And now when I run Puppet Agent-T here, you can see that it doesn't stop to uh, ask for a certificate uh, because here it automatically signed uh, that certificate second. Um, so one of the interesting things here is that um, um, the uh, master uh, has set auto signing to true so whenever an agent uh, run happens on the on a new node it'll auto sign uh, that certificate here um, but it did that already the first uh, just to make sure that the certificate is, uh, is signed immediately. And if we go to the uh, enterprise dashboard, we can also see that second node here now. Um, it also, uh, uh, so it didn't install the Puppet Enterprise agent and as part of that, um, we have also the uh, M collective up and running. So I can say MCO ping here now, or I can say MCO uh, puppet run once. And now you can see here the puppet agent running one time. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and now I can do the same with Vagrant up third. The difference with the third machine is that it uses CentOS 7 as well. And since the master is on uh, CentOS 7 as well, uh, it means that the master all automatically already has the, the YUM package for, uh, for CentOS 7 uh, for the Puppet agent. So the, this Puppet agent should come up a little bit easier. We'll have to wait for it a little bit. Uh, so. I'll uh, look at some of the questions. Um, what to be done for Puppet Open Source? So the, the, one of the main differences between Puppet Enterprise and Puppet Open Source uh, is that uh, Puppet Enterprise comes with a nice installer, which can be run here. Um, for Puppet Open Source, uh, uh, there's an, a number of steps that need to be run in a, in a sort of a script. Um, so by default, uh, Oscar does not support that. Um, but uh, within Olin Data, we've been working hard this year on a project called uh, uh, Opsteader, uh, which you can find here, github.com slash Opsteader Opsteader. Um, and if you look in there, we have in the deploy uh, directory. It's open source, so you can, uh, it's a public repository. Uh, in the deploy directory, we have a Vagrant Oscar uh, uh, directory. And there, uh, you'll find a standard uh, uh, Oscar uh, directory. And if you look into the config file, we have in our roles.yaml uh, a uh, role for PE Puppet Master. But if you scroll down a little bit, we have also a roles.yaml for a FOSS Puppet Master. And this brings up an open source Puppet Master with uh, six gigabytes of memory assigned to it because it's quite heavy. And it runs a shell type provisioner. And that shell provisioner does 
execute all of this script, which takes about 45 minutes, um, but it sets up open source Puppet uh, 4 and uh, uh, the foreman. Uh, so this brings up a uh, development uh, environment for uh, the foreman. Uh, and then obviously we uh, need to not use the PE Puppet agent uh, uh, role for the agents that need to talk to it, um, but we've created a false Puppet agent that also does a uh, shell provisioner, and that runs for uh, uh, rel seven, rel six, and we've created new ones in the in the upcoming release for uh, Ubuntu as well. So you can use that. You can see that it's more cumbersome and there's more steps involved, um, but it is uh, it is possible. Uh, Kartik asks, how the second node is automatically added to the master host file? Yeah, so uh, this is one of the things that uh, um, uh, Oscar does automatically. So if you look here, Oscar stack, um, there is a Vagrant plugin uh, called Vagrant Hosts. And this one uh, uh, provides a host provisioner which assembles host file content based on explicit information and private network settings. Dynamic sources of hostname info such as DHCP or provider specific SSH info are currently not considered. So in our uh, roles.yaml, you see here a provisioner step called hosts and it says sync hosts uh, set to true. So when a new node uh, comes up, uh, our third node, for instance, uh, let me scroll up a little bit. When, our, when that third node comes up, uh, you see over here somewhere uh, running provisioner hosts, and you can see that it updates the host on the master and it updates the host on the second node. Uh, so if I vagrant SSH into that third node, and if I look at ETC hosts, it has second and third in there as well. Uh, see? Master second and third, and now if I run, oh. we can already also see it in. I refresh this page. The third node is also there. Um, so as you see, that came up really nicely. And now if I have code here on my master, uh, then I can uh, um, uh, then I can uh, automatically uh, uh, start running a puppet agent here and uh, uh, test my code instead of worry about setting up a new uh, virtual machine with a new puppet agent on it. Um, the next question is uh, uh, from Moses. Does Oscar stack support uh, R10K workflow? Uh, not out of the box, but the, um, uh, this is actually to go back to my slides real quick. Um, the next topic is uh, what's next. Uh, you can uh, auto deploy R10K uh, or set up FOSS Puppet. Uh, I've uh, included links to uh, places where we do this on uh, on open source projects, so you can uh, you can copy paste the, the code that's being used there. Um, so, do, 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 if I show you that on GitHub, So if you look here, we have uh, we're pulling a little stunt where we have uh, on the, uh, an expanded version of the PE Puppet Master uh, role. So we've added an extra step after the hosts uh, provisioner and after the shell uh, where it, which stops the firewall. Uh, we have another shell provisioner, and that runs basically a shell script. 
And what that does is it installs Puppet modules for R10K and for uh, the uh, GitLab. Uh, and then we do a Puppet apply of an R10K installation uh, file and then an R10K deploy, which makes the, the, the node ready. So that R10K installation.pp uh, file is maintained here also in the manifest uh, directory. And R10K installation, what it does is it creates an SSH key. Uh, it makes sure that uh, github.com is added to the known hosts uh, um, of the of the, the new uh, Puppet Master. And then uh, it uses the R10K class to, uh, uh, to bring up the, uh, um, the R10K uh, configuration. So by doing that, you can combine it all at once. And uh, um, so if you're uh, interested, check out uh, how we do it here. So if you uh, go into uh, the Vagrant Oscar uh, directory of, uh, of Ops Theater, uh, you can just say Vagrant Up Master uh, sorry, fig, uh, Vagrant up, uh, what do we call it, in the VMs.yaml. Uh, we have two different uh, uh, master uh, nodes. We have an, a master and a FOSS master. So if you do a Vagrant up master, you will uh, receive a Puppet Enterprise master. And if you do Vagrant up FOSS master, you will receive an open source master. Um, you cannot do both because, as you can see, they both have assigned the same IP address. So you use one, or one of these two. Um, and then uh, you can uh, you can bring up the other nodes that we have here. Uh, uh, so this is an example of uh, of the stuff that you can do with uh, um, with Oscar. Um, check this out, this repository. If you have any questions or issues, uh, feel free to open issues. We're happy to uh, uh, to uh, uh, use your input um, and uh, uh, work it into the product. Um, the last one uh, thing that I wanted to show you is uh, uh, check out the Puppet Debugging Kit, uh, which uh, does some very more advanced uh, Oscar stuff as well. Uh, so if you look here, uh, there is a uh, quite extensive uh, roles.yaml here, uh, which does a base uh, role and uh, a Windows role. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So this is some more advanced stuff that we don't have time to go into uh, today. Um, so going back to my presentation, um, that's the the webinar for today. We'll answer questions in a minute. I wanted to uh, bring your attention to uh, uh, Isinger Camp uh, Netherlands, which is what we're organizing in the Netherlands on June twenty eighth. Uh, Isinger is a monitoring tool. Uh, uh, that uh, is a perfect uh, uh, follow-up to uh, Nagios, um, or as far as uh, uh, perfect follow-ups uh, go uh, within the Nagios world. Um, but we're uh, we're organizing uh, together with the uh, with the icing uh, uh, community the uh, the first icing camp in Amsterdam. And uh, if you happen to be around that time, it's the three days before DevOps Day is Amsterdam, uh, so you'll have uh, four days of uh, um, very inspiring. Uh, time. Um, that's it. Uh, ready for uh, more questions. I'll go through the questions that are uh, that you guys are leaving in the go to meeting. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, put them in now. Uh, So the question by uh, Hema Kumar is, uh, is this Oscar a module? If yes, what is the main use of this class? Uh, it's not a module. Uh, I explained it at the beginning of the webinar. I'll uh, not go over it again uh, now. But uh, if you missed the beginning, uh, we'll be, uh, I'm, I've made a recording of this uh, webinar, and I'll upload it later today. Um, so uh, the moment uh, it's uploaded, we will uh, email it out to you, uh, to you all so you can uh, take a look uh, um, what Oscar actually is. Uh, and then uh, uh, hopefully if you have any questions after that, you can always uh, contact me directly um, on one of these uh, places. Um, 
Shashank asks, hey, is it possible to uh, configure different versions of HTTPD in different nodes in Puppet? Uh, yeah, that is uh, entirely possible, but that currently has nothing to do with uh, with Oscar itself. So if you're uh, interested in uh, um, in an answer to that question, uh, I would I would suggest you to uh, uh, to contact me uh, outside of this uh, webinar. Um, if anybody else has any questions, now is the time to uh, uh, to ask them. Uh, otherwise, I will uh, end the webinar in a second. If you have a question, you can also raise your hand in this. Uh, um, Go to webinar and I can give you uh, the microphone. No more questions going once, going twice. Thank you very much for attending. We'll uh, send you the recording uh, later today. And uh, I hope you, uh, you learned some new stuff. Thank you.